Well, good morning. I, you've just seen where I am roughly because you've come through the doors of an incredible house in a beautiful part of Ayrshire. And this is very exciting for me because it's the first video um, which Glenn Schooler has agreed uh, to talk about his work and his life in art in our series of Meet the Artist. So I'm here today, and it's a little bit um, chillish, chilly start to the Scottish summer, but um, I'm certainly very warm in the wonderful studio of Glenn Schooler. Glenn, nice to see you. And you too, David. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here many times, I have to say, because Glenn and I have known each other for a long time because Glenn was one of the first um, artists who agreed to um, show his work in the charity sales which we did with Maggie's and numerous other charity events which you've donated to. And we got on well, didn't we, I would say. Are you going to say no? No, I quite agree. No, no, no. <laughs> we got on well, and I love Glenn's work. I've got to be very careful owning a gallery now that I don't say um, that I love one artist's work more than others, but I genuinely love Glenn Schooler's work. And we'll talk about some of the incredible paintings from still lives to the animals to the... Um, I'm trying to remember what's got the wonderful landscape behind me. We're going to talk about these paintings, but what I'd like to... Uh, ask Glenn about is really a little bit about his life, which I don't know everything about it. So, Glenn, it was hard to believe, because you do look very sprightly and youthful, we were actually talking about comparisons with Take That earlier, um, but you were actually born in the 50s, and you went to Glasgow School of Art almost immediately after school? Definitely immediately after Definitely school, immediately. Yeah. And kind of hit the big time, and you were snapped up by the Portland Gallery and big name galleries and, and I've continued with that for uh, most of your business career if you like but can you tell us tell me a little bit about growing up mm. pre going to art school? Sure um, I was very fortunate in that I had an uncle who also went to art school just prior to the war sadly he um, didn't continue his art career after the, the war because he, he joined the RAF and then sadly didn't lift a brush afterwards in anger. He, um, but when I was about eight, um, he bought me a set of, a small set of tubes of oil paint and he, he gave me a demonstration of how to paint a head just on a, on a sketchbook uh, with the oil paint and the smell of the, the linseed oil and the uh, turps and so on just got me, uh, just seemed to... How old were you? I was eight at the time, would you believe. And, uh, and where were you? Where, where did you grow up? We lived with my grandparents at that time uh, in the Sandy Hills in the east end of Glasgow. Um, yeah, I didn't see my uncle that often, but any time he came to visit, he sometimes brought me an art book. And people like uh, Henry Moore and so on that were very big at that time and in the 50s. So that was how that how I got the bug. Basically, I always remember the smell of, of um, linseed. It was such an amazing smell. And the process of painting, which is something I'm, I'm you know, very involved in uh, with my own work. I love the process of painting. So do you really think, from the age of eight, you, know, you knew you might become an artist? I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but it certainly it struck a chord with me. And it's something that I always remember. I always like watching people paint. Um, and as, as you went through school, Mm -hmm. Was it obvious to teachers that you'd go to art school? I think they must have recognised something. Yeah, I was always drawing at an early age and so on. And with my parents, uh, when I was younger, I used to go to Cornwall a lot. And I remember seeing a, a, a store in Cornwall, an artist painting it, doing a demonstration. And I found that fascinating and thought, I would quite like to do that as well. Were you, were you a boy who played football and... Yeah, was, all that. So you were you, you weren't just sort of a total art sport. No, no, I was very good at sport. I won a few medals at athletics and so on, and captain of the school football team. And played at hockey for East Bank FP, and you know, I was very sporty at school. And I was quite tempted to pursue a career in, in sport at one point, but then, oh. well, fortunately, so, I saw the light. <laughs> this is what these um, meet the artists. You, you learn things, and I. 
I'll now call you the athletic Glenn Stewart. Oh. So seriously, um, but can going, we cut that bit out? Now? <laughs> but going going on. Well, that that's been very informative. I love the mm. bit about Glasgow East End as well. Mm. So you got to Glasgow School of Art probably at a a great time in its history, didn't you? In the in the sixties, a fabulous time actually. Who influenced you? As I say, it was a fabulous time. Um, there were some great painters there in the staff. Um, David Donaldson, Duncan Shanks, Liam Morocco, Sandy Gowdy, um, Jeff Squire, John Cunningham. Each of them had <coughs> something to offer. They're all, they all had the, the different um, you know, uh, strong points. And it was just a very good time to be there if you were interested in painting. But you wouldn't want to say one, one of them in particular? Um, well, David Donaldson certainly took a shine to me because he gave me various awards and a travelling scholarship and postgraduate and so on. So he obviously was very taken with my work at that time. Where was that travelling scholarship to again? It was Crete. Oh. I spent three months up in the, the, the mountains in Crete in the plateau in Lusithi and uh, I fell in love with Greece at that time as well. And then you div- a lot of your paintings over the years have had a Mediterranean influence, haven't they? Definitely, yeah. And there's a fabulous painting right behind you. Glenn, for example, of um, that, that's one of my favourite places in the whole world. That's Palma, isn't it? Palma, Mallorca, yes. So that's a relatively recent painting, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, yeah. So you, what I'm trying to work out is, because I'm very aware of your success and global success, because your paintings are in collections, not only in the Mediterranean, but there's connections, I think, in your work with South Africa. Yes. And American, Australian, everywhere. But what was the connection again with South Africa? Go back to that one. Um, South Africa came about through a a friend and Glasgow businessman who had an office in Johannesburg. He he collected my work and he said that I I should really try and exhibit something in South Africa. So he spoke to one of his colleagues in Johannesburg and told him to find the best gallery in South Africa, which was the Everett Reed Gallery. So they've got a huge gallery in Cape Town and a, an even bigger gallery in, in uh, Johannesburg. Because around that period, I, I'm also well aware that the major banks were buying your work, which mm-hmm. you know is quite a compliment that banks have you in their collection, I think in, in terms of the Bank of South Africa as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but going back a bit, um, Glenn, because you... Well, I'm not going to say you were lucky, because you were very talented and you were picked out as one of the degree students to watch. And if I've got my, if my memories collect, and I, and I do know a lot about you and followed the history of your success, and it was the Kelly Gallery and then I think Roger Billcliffe Gallery, some big names already in Glasgow who I've bought from over my life. And then after Billcliffe, I think also you went very quickly, you were snapped up by the Portland Gallery in London. That's correct, yeah. So you were still in your 30s at this point, and your market was going to, you know, a very, very nice um, buyer in in Mm. the West End of London. Did you enjoy that period? Very much. It it involved quite a lot of travelling, which I enjoy doing. Um, Seeing exciting places in London as well. And, uh, yeah, it was was quite different, quite exciting. And then following on from all... Of the, the big success, the celebrity, I suppose. I know you're probably thinking I'm talking up in this type of painting here, which which I think is glorious here, which will be coming to the Ballater Gallery is almost finished. I would almost say this is becoming classic schooler, you know, wonderful, colourful still lifes. Mm-hmm. Um, you got the great honour of becoming RSW, RGI, um, after your name. And I suppose from that period, from your 30s onwards, you've... You've changed subjects a lot, but the style has probably stayed similar over the years. Well, I suppose it, the, the colour palette, um, a love of colour and um, light and so on has been constant. Um, also drawing, I think drawing from art school days has been important to me as well. And I, over there you see hundreds of sketchbooks. Um, I think drawing was something that I learned at art school that, that that's the sort of mechanics of everything, you know. Which I suppose is also going back to the honour of getting RSW and RGI is because you're you're painting in different mediums as well. Yeah, I enjoy it. 
watercolour, this sort of limpid, elusive quality of watercolour, and I enjoy oils because they're you know, so flexible and um, so many things you can, you can move them about. I'm actually sitting here in this incredible studio, lots of space with lots of... Um, I was going to, Glenn would shoot me down in flames, but you know, I was going to say bric a brac around here. But these are your objet d'art, isn't it, <laughs> in the studio for your still lives. I'm looking out of a window here in Glenn's studio, which Tom might zoom into later, where we've got the birdcage, we've got the paraffin lamp, we've got a vase of flowers, we've got beautiful jugs, and we look right out onto the most incredible um, fields. And if you look at the painting behind me, or whatever, and it, it's everyday life that you're picking up on. But mm. could you, Glenn, just talk to us? Because I'm utterly loving these paintings. I've never seen you painting cattle before mm. and horses before. And there's a wonderful painting with a horse behind it. It's coming to Ballater. Cattle coming to Ballater. There's a painting there of a horse and a cart. Could you tell us a bit about these paintings? Sure. Just with regard to the objects you were talking about, most of these were picked up at... Uh markets in France or wherever, nothing of any great value, but they're just things that, that attracted me to, to put in a still life and so on. Um, these paintings, the ones that you're talking about, are all done uh, as back to France again, en plein air, as the French would say, which means painted in situ outside, um, including the one behind David here, the big one of the garden, uh, painted in, in the autumn. Uh, this one was painted right, right, virtually 100 yards from here, just outside. One lovely sunset evening last last summer. And the still life is not finished. I just started that yesterday, so still got quite a bit of work to do in that yet. Um, and this one here, one of of Palmer, that was done from uh, a sketchbook drawing that I did. Uh, uh, done in the studio, not done like the rest of them in the situ, on plein air. The one of the, the the horse in the background there that, that was done in France in a little village called Chamere, which is about fifty miles north of Orange. Mm. Um, beautiful uh, horses from the Camargue. It was a riding school, and th this lady owned these beautiful horses. Just happened to be lucky one day and saw this horse under all the dappled trees. So I thought I'd make a, a really nice painting. They're all beautiful. Everybody knows, I think that. But do you know, Glenn? A lot of people who are maybe artists themselves, come into the gallery and they say, oh my goodness, I wish I could paint as cleverly and as loosely and as painterly as Glenn Schuller. Are, are these words insulting or are they compliments? Are they correct? Um, probably complimentary and probably are correct, yeah. Um, I'm not the sort of painter that sits and draws things accurately and fills it in. Um, I do start very loosely blocking in colour. Um, I probably don't have the patience to sit and paint things for days on end. Some of them do take a long time, I have to say. I'll rework them if I'm not happy with it. I'll go back to it, I'll scrape it off and change it and so on. But um, What are you painting with, Glenn? Brushes or palette knives or what? Uh, a bit of both, actually. I like spontaneity in a painting. I like things to happen immediately. and I like painting quickly to get the type of marks that, that I like to see in a painting. So that's quite important to me. So the colour, and um, I, and this I think is maybe testament to the fact that you are ever changing and you're changing your style, you know, and what I'm loving about this painting is it, it, I've never seen you paint with these wonderful yellows and greens before. You're probably going to tell me I have lots of times, haven't you? <laughs> I have done. Have you? <laughs> so you're in major collections. You're very fortunate, uh, Glenn, to, you know, people like the Scottish government, RBS, Deloitte, you know, I could rattle on, they've all bought your paintings. Mm. You know, without being too self-deprecating, why do you think you are snapped up by the corporates? Uh, not too sure. It could be because the paintings may be uplifting, maybe they think that uh, lift the spirits of the staff in the, in the office, I'm not sure. Uh, You'd have to ask them. You are being too self-deprecating because I think there is a fact, there's no question that these institutions who bought your paintings, they see them as good as investments, let's face it. Mm. But they're also hopefully mm. making the boardroom look beautiful. I've seen yeah. them in major boardrooms yeah. in, in my previous life. Yeah. Do you know, I'm wondering to, to round up, do you know, it's unbelievable actually as I'm sitting here, I'm looking out this window at the cows wandering about literally across the road. It's, it's great. Mm. And, you know, looking at all the 
objet d'art that is here. It's been a treat to come to your studio. I know Tom's video, and he's loving it all as well. I've mentioned that you were born in the 1950s. I'm not going to play in this. Mm -hmm. Will you ever retire? I don't think artists usually retire. They usually just keel over, and that's probably the same with me, I think. Painting um, is a passion. I think it keeps me going. It keeps me alive, and it's something that it's in my DNA. I don't think I'll probably ever give up. I'm not the sort of person that can retire and lie on the beach all day. I've got to be... You're also, um, Glenn Schooler, without blushing, you're surrounded by women in your life. <laughs> um, and your wife and your daughters all paint. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. The, the tradition, and just explain a bit about what they are doing, because it's very different from what, you, from what you're doing. I think it must be something in the water down here. Is it? <laughs> uh, well, they're all very different. Carol um, trained as a graphic designer, but she does beautiful watercolours now, very fine, delicate. Yeah. Lots of detail. Um, Kim in London, she, my two daughters, they both went to Dundee School of Art and um, Kim, uh, uh, leaving art school, went to the, the drawing school in London, the Princess Drawing School, which is now the Royal Drawing School and furthered her, her uh, knowledge of drawing there. She paints mainly portraits and still life uh, and does some landscape as well, to be true. And Lara, she... Um, lives in Aberdour and does wonderful pastel drawings and has got a big show next year at the Scottish Gallery. It's incredible, you know, and all just, as the song goes, all just a little bit of history repeating. So on that note, um, all I have to say is I wonder, my eyes look around this incredible studio and these beautiful paintings is Glenn Schooler, RSWRGI. <laughs> Thank you very much for agreeing to be interviewed. Thank you for coming.